uh, Hani Rashid, uh, principal, Asymptote Architecture. Um, in partnership with Lisa and Couture, we started this office, Asymptote. Uh, we have about uh, I don't, I don't, 35, 40 people now with us here in New York, um, some people in Abu Dhabi, um, and we do a wide variety of work, uh, ranging from uh, uh, art-based uh, things to building design, of course, to master planning, uh, and we venture into other territories sometimes. You know, architecture I, I've always thought of as kind of um, hybrid of other disciplines in some ways. It's, a, it's a, obviously it's a multidisciplinary environment we work in. Um, and I sometimes liken it to um, the fact that we call on experts in different disciplines to do different things. And uh, sometimes we will go, of course, we go off into experts to give us structures or to give us acoustics or to give us uh, in sort of, let's say, um, sort of certainties in space. And those are normally called engineers. Um, at other times, we go to experts to give us uh, metaphysics, to give us poetry, to give us, um, you know, uh, emotion, and we will call those experts artists, I suppose. Um, and I've always seen our role as some kind of an interesting uh, hybrid of those of those two disciplines. And and in many ways, I, I sometimes talk about what we do is um, I've decided to coin a phrase for what we do instead of calling ourselves architects. I, I like to call ourselves, uh, and it sounds a bit strange, but spatial engineers. Um, in other words, the people who actually are in charge of uh, and are charged with uh, engineering spatiality, uh, which is a very particular thing. And, and one doesn't necessarily turn to an engineer to do that, and one can't turn necessarily to an artist to do that, although artists do do beautiful spatial works, uh, but to actually get into that in-between zone, that kind of hybridized condition, I think that's what architects are. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I think we are the, uh, the one discipline, um, no matter what kind of architecture you specialize in, uh, and there are specialties within the discipline, but we are the one discipline that is um, capable of really understanding spatiality. And by spatiality, it's spatiality directly associated with the human condition. So it's not just abstract spatiality in the sense that we are uh, able to produce you know, interiors and environments and so on. Uh, we have to ask ourselves about the fact that these are spaces that are inhabited by um, people, by memories, by futures, by um, you know, emotions again, by uh, various sorts of temperaments. Uh, by histories, by ghosts, uh, that's, that's our world. Um, and I think that we owe that. And so whether we're working on objects or city plans, uh, we, have a, we have a very, very real responsibility to uh, manufacture, engineer, and produce absolutely you know, impeccable spatiality. And, uh, and that's, in the end, what we have to strive towards. It's not easy, and in fact, it's a kind of uh, asymptotic trajectory. We may never get there, but I think the uh, the idea is to get as close to that ideal as possible. It's extremely important. Innovation is uh, probably the most uh, probably one of the most important things that we can look for and look after in, in our field. Uh, I, I find it very sort of strange to be an architect and only look backwards or only look towards um, things that have been done to repeat them. I, I think that we have to find ways to uh, push the envelope, uh, push forward. Um, part of our responsibility also is to progress the human condition, to progress the discipline. Uh, and that means looking into the future, that means um, you know, innovating. It, uh, whether it's innovating with technology, whether it's innovating with thinking, um, it's, it's, it requires us to, uh, to really uh, break through whenever possible. It's a very difficult thing to do. Not all clients want you necessarily to innovate. Um, society sometimes isn't so interested in innovating. Um, people would sometimes prefer that things are more comfortable and straightforward and standard and repeated. Um, but I think that it's, uh, it's in our nature across the field. And again, no matter what kind of architecture you practice, there's a we are somehow made up of this kind of um, 
this kind of strange DNA within us that uh, has the, well, I guess all human beings have it, but particularly in our discipline, that, that we have this urge to find a new solution to a problem, a, a new way around something, a, a new approach. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's very, very important to, to the practice. So the <laughs> networking is a kind of interesting problem. I, I think on the one hand, we need, of course, like every other discipline and every art form um, and every, every discipline for that matter, we need a kind of a, a network. We need a group of colleagues and, um, and um, individuals and, and in our case sometimes clients and companies and others that, that we can rely on and that we are in contact with. So it's a, it's a critical thing to network, of course. On the other hand, it can get the better of you as a practice if, if really one is focused only on the networking as a way of, of advancing or a way of working. Um, you find yourself caught in a kind of in a kind of web of of sort of, um, of, of, of uh, let's say expectations. Um, it's hard to break out of that and produce uh, sometimes things that are a little bit unexpected. We we sort of strike a line. Um, we have very strong networks. Um, we have very strong connections and very strong uh, affiliations. Um, but at the same time, we'll sometimes just go in some other road across some new terrain where. We have no connections, no affiliations, no networks, because those are places where we find ourselves pioneering and, 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 and discovering new things for, for the work. Um, in fact, the practice started that way. We didn't start this practice with strong connections or networks or uh, any kind of reliance. And so we always have that, let's say, somewhat renegade spirit in us uh, as we work. Um, we don't like feeling that we are solely reliant on any particular network. Um, be, it, be it in academia or be it in professional practice, it's uh, just the way we like to operate. Well, the, the internet's been very important for Asymptote. I mean, Asymptote was a firm that uh, probably was one of the first firms to really embrace the internet. Um, we, we designed a virtual museum for the Guggenheim in 1998, perhaps, 97. Um, I taught the virtual design, the virtual digital studios at Columbia University that started around the same time, a little bit earlier than that. So it was the first digital studios, um, at least in any architecture schools we knew of in the States, perhaps even in Europe too. Um, so we've had a very, very strong digital affiliation and a very strong digital sort of backbone. Um, in fact, I would say for the last, uh, since the mid-90s until now, the, uh, the work of Asymptote has been um, very, very tethered to digital innovations uh, and, and digital possibilities. The internet is in fact one of those, a very strong one. Um, we had in the beginning, because we were sort of pre-internet when we started, uh, we had theorized what it would be like to have a sort of internet presence or a global presence if it were possible. Um, and so that the group had this kind of, uh, let's say, desire to, um, to be more of a sort of a, of a net. Uh, a network, to use the previous word that you brought up. Um, what's happened since is that we've, we've realized that it's probably more important that our work is sort of tethered across that network rather than various individuals, which is what we originally thought might be the case. Um, now it's more interesting to us to, um, I mean, we work all over the place, so the internet becomes this kind of conduit that's connecting us to our clients, of course, to the work we're doing, to the um, to the progress of the work. Um, it's even now entering into technical areas like monitoring the work, being able to supervise construction from far away. Um, you know, t technical things now that are part of the internet's growing, uh, let's say on the technical side. So it's not just social networking and um, communicating um, and, and sharing. Uh, it's also become a way of actually monitoring, controlling, using, and utilizing data. Um, so it's and it's going to continue to become even more and more important. It's, um, it's an, indisputably, an indisputable part of, of, of this practice on, on every level. Well, I once, I once said in an interview, and I still hold stand by this, that um, being unbelievably inquisitive, um, somewhat naive, and... Uh, and, and um, and always having a kind of peripheral vision are, are three things that I would say are of, of sort of paramount importance to being a student of architecture. And 
I would carry that further and continue being a student of architecture even when you're practicing um, and you continue to be an architect. In fact, we are kind of perpetually students, so one would, would hope. Um, I think Oscar Niemeyer is one of the coolest students of architecture that I know. Um, and I think that by, by those three parameters or those three uh, aspects, it's, the inquisitive nature is, it allows you to maybe, um, you know, uh, venture into all of these strange areas that we do as architects. We, we meet clients um, from all sorts of disciplines. We uh, venture into all kinds of programs and possibilities. We find ourselves running the gamut from, uh, you know, designing cutlery to um, trying to understand the complexity of a city. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's such a fantastic and broad and powerful discipline in that sense. So inquis being inquisitive by nature is extremely important because you're perpetually curious um, and, and, and sort of engaged. The naivete is important because, um, as someone else once said, very you know, architects are the kind of people who know um, uh, very know a lot about nothing and a little about everything. And I think that that's very, very true. And it's 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 important we are that way. Um, if we become too knowledgeable about any one particular aspect, and that's not to say we can't and we shouldn't. And certain architects do, and they kind of um, move within a very, very limited space, which is great and, and important to have, you know, super special, specialized architects. But in the broad sense of the, of the, of the discipline, um, it's important to have this sort of ability to, um, you know, sort of hover through territories, understand them with a certain level of depth, of course, um, not, not be naive at the level of sort of not really understanding what you're doing or where you're working, but be able to also get out of there and go to the next thing. I mean, for us, for example, um, Years ago, when we had the uh, chance to work with the New York Stock Exchange, and um, you know, we at that time we were a kind of a a pretty well, I wouldn't say avant-garde, maybe avant-garde, but a kind of radical art architecture practice. We were doing most of our work in art galleries and installations. We were, um, you know, I was teaching abstract installation work at Columbia University with my students, and 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 then I ended up in this virtual reality uh, sort of interest, and we started looking at all the digital environments and VR. Um, and then one day the New York Stock Exchange knocked on our door and said, would you be interested in doing a, you know, a virtual stock exchange? And that ability to, A, be naive enough to say yes, <laughs> but B, uh, venture into their world, uh, all of a sudden become, uh, and that was a very corporate world for us. I mean, we were not, you know, sort of tailored or, or cut for a corporate culture, but all of a sudden finding ourselves sitting in boardrooms with 15, 20, you know, very tight, tight, tight individuals in suits, um, and having to have to speak their language, learn their trade, learn their business. Um, they had told us verbatim they had no interest in aesthetics or conceptual thinking. For them to virtualize a stock exchange trading floor was, and, and I can understand why, was supremely pragmatic and important to do at, at a very high level. And we managed to do it, and we learned a lot about working in corporate culture just with that client alone. Um, and you know, produce the virtual stock exchange, which they still use today on the trading floor. Um, and it's, I think it's still the largest um, virtual reality environment constructed. Um, and you can only do that by having that kind of um, combination of curiosity, so a slight bit of naivete, and the ability to jump in. Um, and then you know, this this absolutely fanatical behavior that we have as architects to uh, work through the night and. Uh, pound away and believe in what we're doing um, and, uh, and research deeply what we're doing and, and produce effective and important work. Uh, but that's just, you know, as I think any, any student organization has to start to realize whether or not they started realizing that from the day they walk in, but sooner or later you realize that if you're at a good school because the good teachers will actually, um, you know, not so much teach you how to be an architect, but teach you how to ask questions uh, and how to, um, you know, sort of um, delve into this highly complex and, 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 and powerful uh, terrain that we, we call architecture. You have to, um, you have to go with uh, what, your, you know, what your temperament and what your soul is telling you to do in, in this field. I think that if you feel, there, there are two you know, if you feel that there's a sense of, uh, of suffering and putting in time, then you have to shift gears. Uh, if, in fact, what you're doing brings you um, a sense of, of, of a sort of accomplishment and pleasure, uh, and you actually find yourself 
Um, well, I'll put it in a very different way. I ask my guys here this question often. I said, do you dream about the stuff you're working on? Um, if, when you close your eyes, the architecture you're working on is, is filling your mind in, a, in an interesting way, not, not as a kind of nightmare, um, then you're in the right place. <laughs> you're creative, you're engaged, you're focused, and you're actually taking on something that you... And that doesn't mean necessarily starting your own practice unless, in fact, you would like to do that. That's really... I, I wouldn't recommend everyone does what I kind of insanely did, which was, you know, graduate and then immediately go full force into practice. Um, but, you know, I know others who, who have been able to do that. It really is a matter. It's just that I knew quickly where um, uh, the things that I did really gave me a, uh, that sense of accomplishment and, and empowerment to produce. It's not to say I did work for a couple of architects, but um, I knew when I was happiest when I was actually able to be very, very creative and producing the kinds of things that, that I felt comfortable producing, and, and that those architects appreciated those productions. Um, and, and that allowed me to, to sort of understand where I needed to work and fit. But if it's a sense of, um, if it's laborious and difficult, change jobs, uh, you know, do a competition, uh, take, a, take a few months off if you can, or find a beach, uh, you know, and then, and then, and then, and then come back. Um, but I think that's, that's key, that you really, uh, uh, this, this discipline requires, again, that's that hybrid sort of condition between being a, um, uh, a very, very sort of astute and, and um, powerful thinker, while it requires also you to be a, a, quite a dreamer. Um, and you have to find that mix.